In this video, I use a reflector, which is probably the most important lighting tool you can have in a small studio. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers, and you join me back in my small home studio. Now today we're going to do a shoot using my single Flashpoint Streetlight 360, a brilliant light for a small home studio. Now one light is really good, but two lights is better. But if you're not quite ready to invest in a second light, or even if you have one, a reflector can give you the look of a second light without the cost, and it's a must-have gadget for any studio. Now reflectors come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They vary from the, the pretty small reflector like this one, right the way up to this sort of giant reflector that I have there too. They can even be completely free. If you're in a small home studio with white walls, you've, you are surrounded by reflectors. But the reflector I use most in the studio is this one right here. This is a five in one foldable reflector. It's small, it collapses down, but it gets five reflective surfaces. Let me show you. We've got the, the silver side here, but this is just a, a, a zipped on thing. So you can unzip it and reverse it. And if you reverse it, you would get a gold surface. So a different reflective surface. On the other side, you get a white reflective surface, similar to the silver, just not quite as bright. And there's also the, the translucent surface as well. What's the fifth reflective surface? Well, it's actually the black. Yeah, I know, black doesn't really reflect light. In fact, it does completely the opposite. This is known as a flag, and you use it to block light. And in my small home studio here, that's fantastic, because it means I can control where the light goes and stop it bouncing and hitting my model if I want to make sure that I really get some shadows. Okay, so let's zip this back up again. And we're gonna do a shoot using the five-in-one reflector. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. So today I'm joined in the studio by Dan. Say hello, Dan. Hey. And he's gonna be the model for today, but before we get in with the shoot itself, let's just use the reflector and see how it works to add light into our scene. Now, I've got a basic one light set up here. The light's basically at 90 degrees to Dan's face, and you can imagine how this is gonna look even without taking the picture. But let's actually take a shot and see for ourselves. Now I'm going to use the five in one reflector and I'm actually going to start by using the black side to make sure none of the light bounces off my white wall and kind of contaminates the scene a little bit. So that's a, a nice little use of these five in one reflectors. So we'll pop that there. Okay, let's take the shot, see how it looks. Okay, here we go. So nice, happy smile. <laughs> So as you can imagine, in this picture, half of Dan's face is lit and the other half is in shade. And it really is in quite deep shade as well. So we're going to make it better by using the reflector to add light into the scene. So let's spin it round from the black side to the silver side. Now the silver side and the white side of the reflectors will give different looks. But as a very basic rule of thumb, the silver side will bounce more light back into the scene, but let's see how this goes. Okay, Dan, so same thing again. Big, happy Dan smile. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so with that, that shot, yeah, we can see now we have some light on the shadow side of the face, but there's not much of it. It's there and it's definitely helping, but maybe we want, we want a little bit more. Now you can think of this as a, a second light source, effectively. It's, it's adding light from a second direction but it's a light source that we can't control as easily as our normal speed lights. But we can control it, and we can control it by moving the distance. The closer it comes to the main light, the more light it'll bounce back. So in this case, I'm gonna put it as close as I can to Dan without it being in the scene, and about there should be good, and we'll see how that changes the shot. Okay, here we go. So same thing again, coming in. <laughs> More of a confused face, that one. <laughs> Brilliant. So there we go. With that shot, you can see how the, the lighting is almost balanced. It's almost even, although there is still a lit side and a shady side. 
So using a reflector is a really great tool. You can use it to block light or you can use it to reflect light and you can control the amount of reflected light, the brightness of it, by simply moving it into your scene. So that's the basic setup. Um, let's actually do a shoot. With this first shoot, we're going to do a lighting setup that's a little bit different. We're going to use overhead lighting and we're giving Dan a hat. And there's a couple of reasons. A, Dan looks pretty cool in a hat. <laughs> uh, but mostly because when it comes to lighting, hats can be a real problem. Hats cast shadows at the best of times. And if you want to see the eyes, then you're going to need a reflector. Let's start without the reflector and just see how this goes. First thing I need to do is actually meter for the light that's coming out of the light there. So um, I'm going to meter up here and I'm going to meter off the top of the hat. Here we go. So I'm getting F16 as my meter reading. Now that's a bit too bright. I really want F8. That's kind of my, my go-to aperture for this shoot. So here I can change it because the street light has a little radio trigger that allows me to change it. One, two, three. That's one stop less. One, two, three. That'll be F8. But we'll just double check. F8. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so I've got my lighting where I want it to be. Now we just need to do the shoot. So let's see how this goes. And uh, Dan, I'm going to come down here. Dan's going to do the, the moody mean look. <laughs> and that's pretty good. Okay, now that looks great. I mean, I've got beautiful lighting on the hat and there's some lovely texture coming through on the shirt, but the, the eyes, they're really deep and in shadow. Now that could be exactly the look that you want. Brilliant, stop if that's the look you want. But in this case, we want some light in Dan's eyes and that's where the reflector is going to come in. So I've just got it on a little lighting stand. I'm going to pop that underneath like that. Now you could get the, the model to hold the reflector, but often that does some weird things to their shoulders and arms. So if you can get it on a little boom arm like this, then that's better. Okay, and we'll do the same thing again. So, brilliant. And this time we can just see the little sparkle in the eyes, a little hint of what's going on there. And compared to the, the normal shot, that's considerably better. Okay, so that's pretty good. We'll just do a little, little couple of shots like this. Okay, Dan, so what I like you to do is just... So that works really well. We've got some really nice shots there, really simple setup. Let's just change the lights around once more and we'll give one more shoot a go. So this time we've just changed the lighting pattern a little bit more and we've pushed the light backwards a wee bit and we're gonna go for more of a full length shot. But if I've moved the light, I need to re-meter. So I've got my meter, let's just pop this in underneath Dan's chin and I'm getting a meter reading of f5.6. I still want my f8 aperture, so I need one more stop of light. So once again, I can change my, my settings here on the flash point remote. Three clicks, that's one stop, but we'll double check. f8, so I'm back to my target aperture. Away we go. really was a great fun shoot to do and as I was taking the pictures in my head I was thinking black and white. So let's do a really quick and simple black and white conversion inside of Photoshop. So I've got my picture, it's been through RAW, it's had some basic editing done but you can see how the, the lighting's worked really well. If I go in you can see there the little catch light in the eye there which is of course the catch light from the reflector which is lighting the face. So the photography side of things, big success. For the processing, making it black and white, well, there are so many ways you can do it. I'm going to use image, adjustments, and black and white. But I'm going to do it in a non-destructive fashion. So rather than doing it directly on the image, I'll choose to do it as a layer, new adjustment layer, and black and white. That's the difference between the two. One is destructive, and the other allows you to make some changes. Now, there are a bunch of presets you can try, and they, you know some of these are, are pretty good, and some of them are, are pretty awful. Um, I'm going to stick with the default option and then apply my own custom settings. Because the shirt is quite a strong blue color. One of the reasons I like to use this is I can actually flick off the, the layer and just remind myself what colors are underneath. So I could just try moving the blues, and that will affect just the blues in the picture. But is that shirt actually blue? I'm not sure. 
So instead of using the sliders, I'm going to use the little finger with a, a little arrow left and right. And what this allows me to do is to click on the picture and then Photoshop will work out what color I've just clicked on and move the appropriate slider. Okay, so in fact it was more cyan than blue. And that allows me just to tweak the colors of the blue or at least the tone of the blue like so. Other colors like the, the hat for example I can tweak as well but of course they actually match the tone of the face. So uh, if I'm going to move that, it will have an effect across, across all of the picture. That's perhaps one of the downside of this slider is it doesn't target one individual part of the picture. It does work globally. But once you're aware of that, that's not a problem. Okay, so I'm happy with my black and white conversion there. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm now going to get rid of the, the properties panel. And we could stop there, but a nice little trick is just to make a, a blurry version and sandwich it over the top, which works really well with portraits. I'm going to make a blank empty layer and then I'm going to hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, go to Layer and choose Merge Visible. And that will fill that blank layer with a merged copy of our two layers. You can see they're black and white. So let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're going to Gaussian Blur this up enough so I can still see the picture but I can, you know, it's, it's pretty blurry and I reckon about 30 pixels is about right. So I can still see it's a portrait, but it's a very blurry one. So to blend the blurry one with the sharp layer below, I'm simply going to change it to a blending mode. Let's go with soft light and that just adds a little bit of contrast and a little depth to the picture. The only downside with that is it does just darken the picture down slightly, especially on the eyes. So I'll go back to layer and we'll add in a layer mask and we'll have a reveal all layer mask. And then with a paintbrush, making sure it's set to black, I'll just paint over the eyes just to bring them back and maybe over the top of the shirt there as well. There we go. So that gives me a combination of both the softness and the sharpness where I want it. And that should give just a nice final touch to my picture. So there we go. The reflector really is one of those must have gadgets. Every studio, every photographer should have a reflector. Now, if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.